Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll discuss the Wright brothers, the first people to fly an airplane December 17th, 1903, and their involvement after that development with a series of patent wars that seriously delayed the development of U.S. Uh, aircraft uh, industry up through World War I. It's an interesting story. Let's get to it. Thanks for joining uh, my channel. Uh, thanks in advance for any likes and subscribes. I really appreciate it. Also, the bottom of the background, this is the Flight Test Mini Tiny Tutor. A very nice kit that I built and hope to test fly here in the very near future. The Wright brothers were remarkable people. Through um, great talent, a lot of hard work, dedication, and research, they flew the first man-carrying heavier, heavier than air aircraft December 17th in 1903 in Kitty Hawk, uh, North Carolina. There was a great deal of research that had to go into this. It was not easy. Many people up until that time had success with various types of aircraft that were gliders. Um, and one of the big issues facing all of the early pioneers of flight was the subject of aircraft control. Do you need aircraft control? And if you do need the control, how do you go about doing it? Many of the early gliders of the time were just like today with hang gliders where you would shift your body weight to maneuver the aircraft as it flew along. The Wright brothers experimented with this um, on some of their earlier designs, but they came to the realization that there had to be some method of control of the aircraft in all three axes. There are three axes of control for any aircraft, pitch up and down in the elevator, roll with the ailerons, and then turning with the rudders. The Wrights understood this, and part of the um, challenge faced by the early aircraft designers, nobody had really solved the control problem, and oftentimes they would look to ships for um, information or insight to how they should um, guide an airplane. So a ship has propellers to make it go forward, it has a rudder to turn it. It turns out, for example, the propellers, the design of ship propellers were way off from an aircraft propellers. The Wrights determined on their own with their wind tunnel test, so the wind tunnel they had built, that a propeller for an airplane was really a rotating wing and it had a completely different design and construction as opposed to a propeller for a ship in water. The other thing they found out was that rudders, while they turn a ship, rudders don't work well turning an airplane. There has to be a component of bank where the uh, airplane tilts to one side, and then the rudder smooths out the turn. We call that a coordinated turn to get rid of adverse yaw on, on, on any airplane. So the Wright brothers, through study, seeing what other people have done, even observing birds, realized that something had to be done with the wings to change the shape of the outer uh, portion of the wing. We call them ailerons now. So when the ailerons go down, say on this wing, it has the effect of lifting that wing up. This one goes up and you can bank the aircraft. The Wright brothers did not use ailerons for this. Rather, they actually warped the control surfaces of the outer wing. They were flexible enough they could uh, pull it down. Many of the early planes had wing warping due to the bank. The bank and the ability to control that was the key to successful control of the aircraft and this enabled the, Wrights, the Wright brothers to have their first successful airplane flight. This whole idea of having control of the aircraft in all three axes is what the Wright brothers called the flying problem. And what the approach of the Wright brothers and kind of the subject of this video is, the Wright brothers wanted to make money and there's nothing wrong with that, but their approach to this was to patent the control scheme of using ailerons for bank, to include um, elevators and rudders for the three controls and have a patent on that so that anybody who employed this control mechanism, which is basically everybody today, a 787 flying today uses the same type of control, would have to pay some sort of fee or royalty or licensing agreement to the Wright brothers to use this um, type of control for an aircraft. The Wright brothers first flew in 1903 with the Wright Flyer 1. It was a very uh, primitive design. Uh, it flew uh, several flights on December 17th, uh, 1903. It was damaged on the last flight, but it flew. There's pictures of it. There were five eyewitnesses of, of it. It is accepted that this was the first man-carrying aircraft. 
The Wright brothers, as I mentioned, are very skilled uh, mechanics and technicians to do all the work necessary to develop this airplane, to include developing the wind tunnel but one, and, the, and the propellers, which are very efficient for the time. But the one thing that everybody needed for successful flight was a lightweight, powerful motor. They just didn't exist back then. So the Wright brothers worked with a very skilled mechanic named Charles Taylor, gave a rough outline of the motor. Charles actually built this motor uh, for the Wright Flyer. The design requirement was eight horsepower. The motor actually produced 12 horsepower. And this lightweight, powerful motor was the key for the success of the initial Wright Flyer. Now, after the first Wright Flyer flew, the Wright brothers made a second Wright Flyer with a few improvements, uh, just as they learned from um, developing it. They originally flew in North Carolina because there was a steady breeze off the ocean. They could land on the sand to save travel expenses. The uh, subsequent flights in 1904 were out of Dayton, Ohio. In 1904, for example, they continued to develop their piloting skills and they actually did a full uh, circle of flight. As an aside, to the, the Wright Brothers aircraft, because they wanted to control it, was a very unstable aircraft. It's almost unflyable by anybody today. But this was the Wright Brothers approach. They had done extensive work in 1900, 1901, 1902 with gliders, studying what other people did with gliders. And even though the glider flights are relatively short, they got a fair amount of experience flying this airplane to prepare them for their powered Wright Flyers. The final development was a Wright Flyer III in 1905. Uh, this was a pretty mature aircraft. It was kind of the end of their design evolution. And in 1905, this culminated with a 24 mile flight that lasted 38 minutes, which was a considerable accomplishment at the time. However, the Wright brothers kept all this fairly close hold. They did not advertise to the press. They tried to keep it a secret basically because they wanted to have their patent to make money off the use of this. And in 1905, they did not have this patent. The Wright brothers filed an initial patent in 1903. It was rejected by the U.S. Patent Office. They hired a lawyer, did a proper patent, and they were issued their patent for the flight controls in 1906. Now, the Wright brothers did not get a patent for the airplane, just the method of control primarily focused on wing warping or movable outer wing services to maintain the bank of the aircraft. The idea was anybody who used ailerons, which was going to be anybody building an aircraft, would have to pay the Wright brothers a fairly substantial fee to have permission to use this. Otherwise, they would be a, the, they'd be taken up in court and sued for the amount of money uh, given to them, uh, owed to them for this patent. Uh, as you can imagine back then, these initial airplane companies were very small, just a few people working out of a garage off at times, much like the Wright brothers. They did not have deep pockets. They simply didn't have the money to pay these licensing fees. And so a sternly worded, a worded letter from the Wright brothers, from their lawyers, from the uh, court system would very often um, uh, hinder development and experimentation and further development of aircraft within the U.S. So from 1906, uh, the Wright brothers just stopped flying for about a year or so because they wanted be, be, to, to, to preserve their knowledge and to make money. They didn't want to give any demonstration flights to the Wright Flyer 3 unless they had a contract that something was going to come out of that. They just didn't give any free demo rides or anything like that. As part of the discussions with the U.S. government and other agencies, uh, keep in mind the Europeans were working as hard as they could developing their own flying machines at this time with limited success, some straight ahead flight, uh, but nowhere near the control that the Wright brothers had with uh, being able to fly circles and long flights. There were two things that happened in the 1907-1908 time period. One was a demonstration of the Wright Flyer to the U.S. Army Signal Corps because they were interested. Maybe this would be a way to um, do reconnaissance and help with the U.S. Army. And also there was a big French aviation event in the summer of 1908 in France. And so the Wrights shipped over one of their airplanes. Orville went over there to... Um, to test fly it, to make sure that everything was okay, and to give some demonstrations. Now, up to this time, the Europeans had heard that the Wright brothers were flying, but they hadn't really seen much evidence. There was no internet back then. It was just communication it was hard to do. And everybody thought the Wright brothers were basically bluffers. They just didn't, they weren't able to fly. They were just making all this noise and um, without any effect. 
So the, the, um, they set up the airplane. They did a series of flights in France. They were very successful. The end of the flight, um, end of the flight demonstration period had a flight lasting two hours and 20 minutes. It went 77 miles. This was unheard of at the time. Uh, they took passengers for rides in France. And so it was an established aircraft. But now everybody sees that the airplane flies. The Wright brothers are successful. They've flown in Europe. Everybody knows that now. There were thousands of people witnessing these flights. And the same for the US Army in Washington, DC. Now, where do we go from here? Again, the Wright brothers' um, view to make money off of airplanes is not to develop airplanes, sell airplanes, more advanced airplanes, and be a leader in aircraft development. It was to license this control function to include the ailerons to anybody and just collect licensing fees. So as a result, the Wright brothers did no research and development. All of their time was spent in court um, suing people for infringement on their patent. Today, we'd probably call it patent trolling, where you have a patent. You just go out and sue anybody that you think might be infringing on your patent. But it had the net effect of really um, holding back development in the U.S. of uh, up-to-date, advanced, more modern aircraft, which was happening in Europe at the time. So the date that the uh, patent was issued to the Wright brothers was May 22nd, 1906, and it was for, quote, a new and useful improvement um, in a flying machine. Note, it's controlling an airplane, not the fact of an airplane itself. The Wright brothers also, through their legal team, got patents in France and Germany for this same control um, mechanism. And so the future for the Wright brothers was just they were in court all the time trying to collect their fees and having the effect of holding back development of um, these aircraft. And um, the Wright brothers, the Wright factory was set up in 1910, uh, stayed in business for about five years. And during that whole time, there was no um, more developed aircraft after the Wright Flyer Three, for all intents and purposes, or a few one-off test planes built. The Wright brothers built a total of 120 planes during the entire time that they uh, produced airplanes, which is not that many airplanes. And by 1912, 1913, they were so uh, obsolete, they were just dangerous and just nobody was buying them anymore. Wilbur Wright died in 1912 of typhoid fever while he was in Europe uh, fighting in the courts for the collection of their patent fees. Orville Wright didn't quite have the temperament to run the company. It was sold to the um, Curtis Aircraft Company in 1915. So the Curtis Wright Company went from there. And an interesting fact about the Wright brothers, as I mentioned, Wilbur Wright died of typhoid fever in 1912. Orville, who was the younger brother who first flew in 1903, Orville Wright's last flight as a pilot was in 1918 in a Wright Flyer. Orville lived for another 30 years. He died in 1948. For the last 30 years of his life, from 1918 to 1948, he never flew as a pilot in an aircraft ever again. His last flight was in 1918, the first man to fly. Just an, an interesting story on the history of aviation. So as we discussed, the constant presence of the Wright brothers suing, threatening letters, legal action, really held back development of aircraft in the U.S., such that when the United States entered World War I in 1917, there was not a single combat-ready aircraft in the United States of America suitable for combat over in Europe. To understand the war had been going on for three years at that point, it started in 1914. There was extensive development, both of the Germans and the Dutch, Anthony Fokker, uh, the, the Dutch were neutral in World War I, built airplanes for the Germans, as well as the English and French. They weren't paid any fees to the Wright brothers during all this development, but there were huge advances in aircraft technology, size, engines, everything needed to make more advanced fighter aircraft. The U.S.'s leading ace of World War I, Eddie Rickenbacker, 26 and a half air-to-air uh, -air kills, had to fly a French spot airplane for the war. Uh, there were some license-built British DH-4 um, observation bomber aircraft, but no meaningful U.S.-designed aircraft in World War I. So what happened to resolve this issue? As I mentioned, Orville Wright uh, sold the Wright Airplane Manufacturing Company in 1915 to the Curtis um, team, and Orville kind of drifted off the scene. His last flight as a pilot in 1918, he just wasn't involved in aviation activities from there. 
but the pattern was still there. What had happened was it was resolved by political leadership. There was a young 38-year-old, um, let me get the title right, he was the Assistant Secretary of the Navy named Franklin D. Roosevelt. Now, Franklin Roosevelt, the Assistant Secretary of the Navy um, in 1916, future President of the United States in 1930, um, 1933, Roosevelt got together the key aviation companies to include the Curtis Wright Company, strong-armed them, and got everybody who had any sort of patent or intellectual property information on airplanes to put them together in what we would call today a patent pool. All the patents were together. Manufacturers who wanted to use this information could join the patent pool, pay a fairly modest fee to access this property and allow them to use it to develop their aircraft. This broke the um, uh, focus with the Wright brothers on the suing, made it much more equitable for the manufacturers to take this information and use it to develop more advanced aircraft, which is what happened in the United States. So how to view the Wright brothers today and their role in history, the early part of aviation, we should always honor them for the um, dedicated work over years they did to produce the first man carrying a uh, heavier than air aircraft. But they were loners, they marched to the beat of a different drummer, neither one of them ever married, and they just had an idea to make money from aviation that impacted the development of US aviation in the early years, with other people making huge advances, had an impact, on our ability to enter World War I with any U.S. fighter aircraft. And probably the best way that we should remember um, them is their historic first flight. But we should also remember the years of, um, I'm quoting from a report here, the years of needless, bitter legal conflict in which they embroiled the, in which they embroiled the industry that they had founded. So that's a little uh, discussion of the Wright Brothers and history. And I thank you for joining me on this. And we look forward to seeing you on future videos. Thank you.